Hey everyone, this is John from Tools in Action. Today I'm going to take you through and show you how to make this super simple barrel stave tea light candle holder. Uh, the bulk of this project should take about an hour, the actual building and assembly, hour maybe two, and then after that I'm going to give you suggestions on how I finish this one. Uh, so basically you've got to get your hands on some barrel staves and these ones were given to me um, by a business that wanted me to make them something out of these barrel staves and until recently I didn't know that you could just go out there and buy them. I saw them at Rockler a couple weeks ago when they were selling bundles of these barrel staves and they're all over the internet. So quick and easy simple project especially if you're into wine or like barrel looking items quick and easy to make so let's get to work and let's make this. Unlike most projects we're gonna start with sanding first. And the reason being is these barrel staves have been painted. Um, I don't really care for the color. If you've got a natural or better looking barrel, I wouldn't do it, but the inside's kind of rough too. So we're just gonna sand this over. Not real good. Just kind of give it some character and make it look like it's, it's old and used. So I'm just starting off with an 80 grit paper. We're just gonna sand for a while. As you can see, we've got two different size barrel staves here. One's gonna be the top of this, one's gonna be the bottom. And I usually like putting the smaller of the two on the bottom. Now that gives me plenty of room to drill my holes for the tea lights. So it's basically gonna look like this, but I don't want this bottom stave being close to the same lengthwise. So I'm gonna cut it a little bit shorter. And the best way for me to do that is on the table saw here. What I'm going to do is raise my blade up and we're going to start cutting off the ends here until I get to the right length. Actually, I think I liked it right there. So pretty simple, we just cut a little pieces, a couple pieces off. If you ever get a chance and you have a barrel stave like this and you make a fresh cut, you can smell what was in it. I can smell, this was red wine in here before, I can smell it. It's really cool. Got an oak dowel rod here. This is going to be my connection between the bottom and top. I'm going to put two of them down here and I will decide on how tall I want them to be, but the most important part is I need to have them, the holes right on top of each other, lined up, and in the center of the boards. So what I've done is I've got a, a flexible tape here. I was able to find the length of my board and find my center point. Off the center point, I've gone two inches in both directions. And at that point, I've measured the width of the board, which was two and a half inches. So I set my, comp I set my um, straight edge here for an inch and a quarter. So I can go right up there, X marks the spot, and this is where I'm gonna be drilling my holes. I'm gonna do the same with the, with the top piece there, and then I'm gonna take it to the drill press. Now this half inch dowel rod that I'm using doesn't quite fit into the half inch holes. They're just, it's just a little bit larger. I can't jump up to the 5 eighths, that's just too big. So what we gotta do is sand this down a little bit and then we can pound it in with a mallet and it'll be a nice tight fit. <laughs> Time to pin the top and bottom sections together. Just gonna put a little bit of glue, just a little bit in each one.
these are tight fits so I've just done a quick fit up with it and uh, just to see if it would work I don't want to go too tight with it so when we get going here we're gonna pound these right in Let's turn this around All lined up. Nothing like a good mallet in the shop. All right, we're nice and secure. Now it's time to drill the holes for the candle holders. And I've decided to go with three. Originally I started with five, but I just didn't like the way it looked. So we're gonna go with three. And I've already pre-measured them. They are approximately two inches at the bottom, and then they taper up. So I'm gonna go ahead with a two inch hole, flat bottom hole. And I've got them measured out dead center in the middle, four inches off this edge and four inches off of this edge. Ran a string line through the middle and centered it on this board. So now we're gonna take it over to the drill press just like it is, because this is how it's gonna sit, and now we're gonna drill our holes straight up and down from here. This way, the tea lights will sit level. So as you can see, our forcing hole bits drilled a nice flat bottom hole that's level once it's all together. So everything fits nice and not tight. It has a little bit of wiggle room, but it has a place to stay so it won't fall out. So now we're going in the final stretches here. And since I want to keep this rustic type look, I'm just going to finish it with some Danish oil and then probably put a uh, coat or two of polyacrylic satin over top of it. So what I like to do is take my um, my wife throws away cookie sheets every once in a while, so instead of throwing away, I like to use them, repurpose them. This way it keeps some of my Danish oil off of, the, off of my work surfaces. I usually go just with the natural Danish oil. I've tried the colored before and I just wasn't tremendously happy with the results. As you can see, the Danish oil is going to darken this whole thing up quite a bit. And with these oak barrel staves, it's really gonna look sharp. We're just gonna apply this, let it soak in, and come back 15, 20 minutes, 20, 30 minutes, and put another coat on. And then wipe it down and call it done. Before I put my polyacrylic on though, I'm gonna let this sit for a few days, three days or so to dry out. That's what the, it's recommended at least. I put it on before that in just like a couple days or a day and a half, but we're gonna stick to the rules on this one. On the last clip, we had just put Danish oil on our project here. Now you can leave it like this and go with this real plain rusty, uh, rustic look, or what I like to do is I like to give it just a little bit of shine with this uh, polycrylic clear matte finish it's uh it's going to give it a little bit of a, a shine but not like a big glossy shine i like using this polycrylic recently quite a bit because water-based it dries really fast so you can put coats on quicker than you can with um, polyurethane plus it's clear it doesn't like uh discolor your work um, polyurethane sometimes gives it a yellow tint so i'm just going to apply this real quick with a foam brush then we'll let it sit and on the third I'll sand it after the second coat and then put one more third coat on it and we should be good. As you can see I put the final coat of our polycrylic on there it's got a nice uh, sheen on it not too bright not too dull um, stable Looks nice, has a little wobble to it, and you could work on the feet if you wanted to, but um, 
It's a nice gift project for someone, a housewarming project, anything like that, Mother's Day, whatever works for you. Super easy, you can make these, just give them out as gifts if you want to as friends. So hopefully this helped, gives you some ideas. Go out, get in the shop, and do some work. I'm John from Tools in Action, talk to you later. Remember, for more exciting tool action, go to toolsinaction.com.